I was interpreter of Pastor Prince many years ago, and he inspired me. Thank you, Pastor Lee. And I go straight to my presentation. I'd like to share with you the importance of fathering ministry. Because Jesus didn't come to start a religion. He came to make a family back to God. Uh, in the Gospel of Luke, Adam was called the son of God. Not everybody is a son of God. So, in John chapter 14, verse 8, Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father. It is sufficient for us. Or smoke. Be sufficient, be enough to be possessed of unfailing strength. And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Didn't you know that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? God promised he's the helper of the fatherless. In Psalm 68, he's the father of the fatherless and the defender of the widows. So, according to Dr. Mark Henby, there's a book of the order of a son. Uh, he mentioned that there are five things that only a father can give. The first one is identity. So many LGBT and now QI, queer and intersex. Why? Identity crisis. You have lady boys in Thailand. You have soft boys from Korea, sorry. And the second one is purpose. A man without a purpose is like a ship without a radar or a compass. And a father give a vision. Only a father can give inheritance, especially legacy. Not memory, but legacy. And the other one is blessing. That's why Esau, the hunter, cry aloud. Father, give me another blessing. He sought for the blessing, but he, uh, he got the second class blessing. The first blessing is given to Yaakov, to Jacob. These five things, with all respect to the, all the women leaders and pastors, only a father can give. That's why when I was uh, at a time interpreting for our Pastor Prince in full gospel in Surabaya, my friends give me a nickname. They, give, they, get, they call me Boksu. Moksanim, Musa, Pastor. I think that's a very high uh, acclaim, or you, you call it. It's, uh, it, it's just a great responsibility. But now I understand that a greater than pastor is to become a father. In Genesis chapter 18, when God came with two angels, it's a Christophany, it's a Christ in the form of man came to the tent of Abraham. He didn't ask, how many seats do you have in your auditorium? Or how many members do you have in your church? How many cattle do you have? Is he asking, where is Sarah, your wife? And then he said, I will reveal to Abraham everything that I will do. He will become a prophet. But God said, he must command his children to follow the laws of God. That's why to become a husband and a father is more important to become an apostle or prophet. We must serve out of our family. Many families of the pastors really hurt. And they, we call this the children PK, preacher's kids the most neglected person on this planet. You know that uh, there are three fears of an orphan. Fear of trusting. They can never trust anybody. More than believing, trusting. Fear of rejection and abandonment, again. Fear of opening our heart, their heart to love. 
they become rigid, they become, uh, you know, there's no such thing like orphan spirit, but orphan attitude. Uh, because I, I was trained in Surabaya and I was a preacher in the prisons, so I know that many inmates, they are fatherless. Many lesbian, many gay. Uh, in Jakarta, we have uh, LGBT everywhere. Yeah, and and they say, and now, the the other name they call me is Daddy, Daddy or Father or Papa or Abba. One day, uh, there's a huge debate in Indonesia about how to call uh, God. Shall we call it Elohim, Yahweh, or uh, in he Hebrew or in English or in Greek? At that time they fight, then they use many verses. I just keep my peace. I keep my mouth shut. And then uh, the leader of that um, discussion asked me, Pastor Timothy, do you have any suggestion? I said to them, uh, we have a privilege to call Father to God, Daddy, Abba. Why could we call him uh, King or President or even Jehovah? Just call him Father. And the discussion closed. <laughs> call him Abba. Abba. Yeah? Hallelujah. And for basic emotional needs, you can see from the presentation, the need for unconditional express love. Many uh, in my shop, there are many pastors, worship leaders, and uh, many activists of the church are gay. And they, they, are, uh, they tell me what is their most need. Their need is uh, unconditional love. Unconditional acceptance. When I hug them and they call me daddy, there's, there's uh, the hurt is being healed by the Holy Spirit. The need to feel secure and comforted. That's why to be an orphan is comfortless. Nobody comfort them. The need for praise and affirmation and the need for a purpose in life. Our God is a generational God. Slide number 11. He called himself the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. Uh, I met a pastor from Thailand. We heard what happened yesterday in Bangkok. But the book about the, one of the most benevolent king life now on this planet is King Pumipong. And the, uh, the, the book said, the king that never smiled. Why the king never smiled? Because the people didn't like his son. The people doesn't like uh, who will inherit the throne. And they love more for the princess, Princess Rindorn. Princess, prince, but a princess cannot be inherit the throne. And remember the, the year 1933, the, the great kingdom of Showa, Japan, was in crisis because they don't have a son. They, uh, because a princess cannot be a king. At that time, uh, at the time of that crisis, uh, one minister came and they gave uh, the good news, the Prince Akihito was born. The Prince Akihito. Hito uh, is my Chinese name. My name is Ren or Jin. It means kind. A king must be kind. A pastor must be kind. Hallelujah. And they gave uh, 25 salvo. And the kingdom 
was continued. Hallelujah. A kingdom without sons will be seized. Jesus uh, did an again for him, and they sing Indonesian song in Korean. Chayange, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, let us set our priority right. What time do I have left? <laughs> Ten minutes? Okay. Um, the first one must be fathering. Discipling is in that fathering. Give purpose, give vision, and you must bless your sons and daughters. I must say, uh, sons, uh, it's including all the women. Hallelujah. Because Hebrew, the second chapter, verse 10, by raising up many sons into glory, our goal must not be success but glory. Amen? Success is only for yourself, but glory is for God. To be fruitful, to be blessing for others. Okay, the third point I will put across is multiplication can be done only through fathering. It's not by um, a great crusade, as we know, or this ministry or that ministry, television, radio, that's all good. But multiplication can be done only through fathering. We don't have children, biological children. We have married 38 years now. And uh, I was not a Christian. Uh, my, of course, my ID card, I'm a Christian. Because in Indonesia, if you don't have a religion, you will call a communist. <laughs> but after two and a half years of marriage, it's like hell for my wife. I'm this, I'm this devil. But the Lord called me, and I surrendered my life to the Lord 38, 36 years ago. But we don't have children. Why? I become frustrated. I don't have children. If you are an Asian, especially you are Chinese, you don't have children. You don't have purpose in life. But after I know the Lord Jesus, God made me a limited edition. Amen? In, in, uh, in my, uh, I was Hokkienese, uh, Indonesian, and in Hokkien, we don't have children, it's Bokia, we don't have children. But in Australia, it's kids free. <laughs> what is, I'm, uh, am I aiming right now? Fourth generation leaders. And the things that you have heard from me, the first father, among many witnesses, and the second one is Timothy, commit the same to faithful men, the third generation leaders, who will be able to teach others also. Every deacon must be the husband of one wife, a good father, respected by his children, have a good name outside the congregation. We must minister out of our family. Hallelujah. Four generations. But the problem is, we can only serve our own generation. But we can prepare for the second, third, and fourth generation. The Chinese has a proverb. The first generation building. The second generation, they... Uh, they receive the blessing, and the third generation destroy everything. <laughs> but Paul said, you must commit this teaching to the faithful men who can teach others also. There's multiplication. It's not time for church growth anymore. It's about church multiplication. It's not church anymore. It's kingdom. A kingdom without sons will cease. That's why the church is only 40, 70 years, but the kingdom of God never ceased. 
Hallelujah. Is there another importance of the mothering ministry? <laughs> Do you know any idea of, of, about that? The first time I, I like to mention to you, we are spirits and we don't have gender. Amen? One more time with all my due respect to all the, the mothers here. We also need a mother ministry. In the second, uh, first Thessalonians, the second chapter, Paul called himself a nursing mother. A nursing mother. Give his life. I don't give you only teaching. I give you also my very life. But also, he mentioned it many times, you have many uh, teacher, you have many trainer. Trainer is by duck or ghost to train up uh, the royal sons and daughters. But not many father. I'm your father. And he called Timothy Technon. Take notice, my beloved son. Hallelujah. There's an intimacy. So mothering is included. Because uh, in the great picture, uh, the, the prodigal son drawn by Rembrandt. The father is a royalty, embraces the beggar son, the prodigal son, and the hand. The right hand is the male's hand, but the other is the female's hand. The mother do like this. It's okay, son. It's okay, son. It's okay. But the father said, come on! <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Your man, push it down. <laughs> so we need both, fathering and mothering. Nursing mother. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Lee.